Hello there, smelly butts, and welcome to the hashtag Know Yourself, Know Yourself podcast. Whee! Let's, 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 lads. Welcome to the podcast. My name's Ronald Finn, and join in and jump on board the crazy train. I'm joking. There's no train. I don't. I'm not a conductor. I don't have a degree or a license or anything in that kind of manner. But but jump on board. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come, come on. There's no delay. Bell's ringing. Come on. Let's go. No, no. I'll stop. So if you don't know what this podcast is, this is me, Ronald Finn slash Aaron Peters, talking some nonsense for the next half an hour. And you're listening. And I'm very thankful for that. But yes, keep listening. And it's great. And this week, the topic I've chosen is relationships. Ah. Now, if you're an avid listener of my podcast, you would know that I was going to kind of defer this. I've deferred this. I've deferred, deferred this for 15 episodes now because I didn't know how, what angle I wanted to come at relationships at. And there's definitely going to be another episode of talking about relationships. But for now, I've, I've kind of, I've taken it to, I've, um, I've kind of, uh, planned out a nice little story journey for you to for us to go on and and we're going to do that right now soon at some point whenever I start it so let's how about we stop dilly dallying and 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 I was gonna say jump on board again guys I'm thinking about jumping on board like I think you should join I think you should join right stop talking about jumping on board as you can see this episode is called pure loneliness Two relationship edition now again as you know i had an episode before called pure loneliness i will put the link downstairs but we're doing point two now and it's the relationship edition if you didn't get it and before we carry on we have to talk about our sponsors our sponsor this week slash this podcast is a single shot soya macchiato because it's real small and if you don't want to stay in a coffee shop for too long, you can just really, you can knock it back real smooth. And the soy milk really makes it smooth to kind of glide down your, your gullet. And, and you can get out of there away from people and carry on your lonely, lonely life and your lonely days. And it's just, it's just a great coffee for a lonely person. You don't want to spend too long. You don't want to get like a, a large cappuccino or a, a chai latte or anything like that because it's actually quite big and you'd have to stay there for quite a while drinking it while, while other people enjoy their time in the coffee shop and, and you, you kind of get scared. But then also you don't want to get a, a single espresso or a double espresso because um, cause basically uh, it's, it's too harsh. It's way too harsh that you need something in there. You need milk, but you don't need normal milk. You need soy milk because, again, you need to make it lubricated and, and nicely go down your gullet. Uh, you could maybe have almond milk with it, but but anyway, a single shot soya macchiato is our sponsor today. I'll put a picture of it downstairs as well. But... But that's our sponsors talked about. And now on to the actual episode. We've gone on for three minutes of madness. Welcome, guys. So um, the story is going to begin this way. I've I've kind of um, had this this time since my last podcast and over the last couple of years, really, to think about how 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 my life's going to pan out and how my life's going to uh, how I'm going to become a big big time this thing and big time this thing and have so many friends and stuff like that. But how's it going to end? That's what I've been focusing on the last week or so. Uh, how's it all going to come to a head? And I thought, um, I thought about of, of, a, of a way. I thought I know how it's going to end. I know exactly how it's going to end. I'm going to be stuck in this house that I'm currently in with my friends. But I'll be alone, so don't worry. I'll be alone. But I won't be alone, so don't worry again. I'll have 15 dogs with me because I love dogs. I have 15 dogs taking up all the other rooms and... I, I've realised I'm going to be sitting in my chair, my armchair, with a fire. Even though we don't have a fireplace, I'll put a fire in the corner. And I'll be watching episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And slowly, but surely, I'll mostly be choke on a, on a cocktail sausage and, and, and die. And slowly, one by one, my dogs will worry about me, and try to find help, be crying and whatnot, and then realise they have no food and eat my body. 
and that's how I'll go. Now, you might think this is a dramatic um, ending to my life and, and it's very unnecessary, but I think it's the only way. The only I think it's this way because because I've been single for so long now. I've been single for, I've counted, maybe roughly about six years and it's been a fun six years, single life. Holler at me if you're single. All the single ladies, bi bitches, yeah? Wanna jump, jump, no? Okay, holler at me if you're single, whatever. But like, single life's great, but it's been a six years and I'm starting to think there's either something wrong with me or something wrong with everyone else. And I'm pretty sure it's everyone else. <laughs> Am I right? Um, again, there's no one in my room, so I'm kind of aiming this at no one. I'm aiming this at my lamp and my lamp's not going to really give me a good response. It's just giving me light. <laughs> but um, but again, and I thought about my last relationship, well, my first and only relationship, because um, that girl is now, a, a, she's an avid, uh, she, ooh, she ooh, she's quite a good lesbian now. She's, that's her lifestyle, that's who she is, and that's great for her. She I actually saw earlier, she posted a picture on Instagram or Facebook or something like that with her girlfriend. She looked very happy. She talked about being in love and stuff like that, and that was really sweet. But it's nice that she moved on from there. And I remember when this was like, so six years ago, this was now when we were in, say, year 11 slash 12. And I remember people coming up to us after we broke up and wondering if I was all right and doing basically the rounds of, oh, you're right, man. You're right. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's fine. It's all fine. And then she got a, she got a girlfriend and I was like, oh, this is going to reflect badly on me, is it not? And then people would come to me and be like, so you were the last person with be <laughs> right? Oh, 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 I will bleep that out later. Uh, you're the last person with that person, and uh, <laughs> you're the last person with that person, uh, were you not? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and now they're going out and go, yep, yep, yep. Did you have anything to do? Who knows? Who knows? I, I don't really keep a calendar of what I've done, so how about you get off my back, please? Um, so that kind of made me really panicky about um, relationships and stuff like that, and subsequently six years later i'm still not in a relationship for some reason um but since that time so over these years i've i've kind of thought well if i'm not going to be in a relationship i need to i need to kind of open my world up to what's out there and what I, what options are out there for me and um i um so i became an avid uh, relationship watcher so i would watch uh, relationships and kind of uh, pick them apart and figure out what i want from a relationship and what not to do in a relationship and what to do and what and everything that goes on in that world that i don't know much about so i watched some celebrity couples i watched um tay tay Good old Tay Tay uh, Swift, always good for a life lesson. Her long list of Starbucks lovers, um, which kind of sent me on a derailment. So do I have to have a long list of lovers? I, who knows? Who bloody knows? I watched uh, Rihanna and Chris Brown's relationship. I I turned off that one very quickly for, for some reason. I, I, I didn't think it was very, very helpful to what I was trying to achieve in the relationship. And then I looked at um, something more political, something more upstanding, some, some people older. Um, I looked at Barack Obama and Michelle Obama and, and their presidential relationship. And it's great looking at their pictures. I don't know much about them, but their pictures are very pretty. So that's what I want to aim for, Instagram pictures on point. And then I also looked at um, relationships obviously close to home. So like my friends and my family and, and I tried to uh, try to compile a list of what to do in a relationship. And I'd also take some friends aside and be like, so what what do I need to do? What do I need to be in a relationship? How do I get into a relationship? Give me some advice. And the advice I always got from every single friend was, don't do it. Don't do it. It is the most stress you will ever go through. Just, just, just get out. Just don't get into a relationship. Don't get into a relationship. Now, you can't tell someone not to get into a relationship because apparently it just happens. But people were physically saying, don't do it. Like, what But what other options are there for me? Like, if I didn't get into a relationship, what other options are there? So 
I, again, I thought I could follow in the footsteps of Tay Tay and have a long list of Starbucks lovers. But I realistically thought I only like one thing on the Starbucks menu, which is a mocha frappuccino. Don't judge me. A mocha frappuccino. And if I apply that to real life, that's all I really want. One person to kind of be with. I can't imagine sleeping in one bed with one person and being like, oh, yeah, that was some great sexing we just did right there. How about you stay here and I'm just going to nip down to the shop. And then while I was at the shop, I met another person and I was like, well, let's go back to your place. We can't go back to my place because that's where my bitch was staying. I'm going to sleep with you there. And then I go back to the uh, go back to the store because I didn't pick up the bread that I needed to take back to the first bitch. And I see someone else there. So I'm like, do you know what? I can't I can't kind of go anywhere else. So how about we just have sex in the supermarket right here in the bread section and I do it and I bring the bed back and I get the bitch out and I have toast I can't do that that's too much stress for me I can't deal with that um so I thought okay forget that one how about staying an avid relationship watcher or what I found is something even more brilliant upgrading to becoming an official bird wheel. Now, this sounds like a bad thing to some people, but I think that is a great career path that I could lead into. Now, I've already uh, um, uh, found symptoms of it in myself, of being a third wheeler or um, any other name that you can think of it. So I decided to do some more research into it and, and figure out what I was getting myself into. So I found a definition on, I think it was Urban Dictionary. Thank you, Urban Dictionary, for that. And it says, um, one who deters from the socialization of a couple, perhaps when being invited out of pity or feeling, feeling it a duty to bring that person, that single person, along. This person may ease the situation by finding a reason to be there, um, to be in the environment of said couple. That's me all over. That is literally written on my heart. I don't even know what that metaphor means, but it's written on my heart. I think I could be an official, could be an official third wheel all my life. And that's, that, that actually takes my breath away, that I actually have a purpose in a relationship. I may not be in a relationship, but I'll be an accessory to the relationship. That's amazing. So I did some more research and I went onto a website called uh, uh, YouTube. Um, I say uh, YouTube and um, I found two videos. Now I'll post them down below and they're great videos. Um, and one was called um, on the People Be Like channel, which is uh, which is connected to the SourceFed channel. As you know, I really like the SourceFed channel, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it was by William Hayes and it's called Why I Hate Being a Third Wheel. So I got some great tips from that video. And then I uh, went, saw another video by um, a YouTuber called Lily, who goes by the name of Superwoman. And it's called When Your BF Gets Into Relationship. So I took some information from that. I took some information from the um, description I got and my own experience. And I've come up with a uh, complete roundup. I've come up with um, the ultimate third wheeler goals or rules. And by Ronald Finn, by me. So cue music. So, so you need to... For anyone out there who is looking to become a, a official third wheeler, you need to first of all find your position in this relationship. Now, do you want to be a person who tries to steal one of the partners away because said one is maybe your best friend or a really close friend that you want to take away or the person they're going out with is someone that you want to go out with and you want to break them up? You need to figure out if you're that kind of person or you're just there to facilitate said couple. Now, I'd say go for the facilitation of the couple because it's a lot easier and I've tried both. I've tried both and I've broken up lots of couples and it's worked out in some ways and it hasn't worked out in other ways. So it's very messy that way. So just go for the facilitating. Next, you need to, you need to find gaps in that relationship. You need to figure out what, what, what you can do when you're there to facilitate them. So I, um, I've come up with some great ways of doing this. So you need to, you need to find 
an argument. You need to find an argument in that couple. And um, I've thought of some ways of doing that. So you could, for one, stay in their house and hide in the wardrobe which is a great idea because you could figure out what kind of fashion sense you want to have to sim uh, find similar clothes of uh, the person, the couple, which would be great. Also, you'll hear everything. Two, you could, um, you could, this isn't a very advanced one. You can um, take one of the uh, couple's phones. You can pretend to call yourself. You can lock the phone, give it back to them, leave immediately, and then just listen to them while they're at home thinking that they're by themselves. Now for an advanced person to do this, before you leave, you mention something that one of the couple have said to you. So say it's something about the washing up. You may be um, walking to the kitchen go, my God, it stinks in here, right? It's messy, it's, it's a, it's a shithole, right? Right, anyone else? I'm gonna go now. And then you walk out, you've just planted the seed. You've just planted the seed of an argument. You go into your car and you listen intently and you figure out, what can I do to help them out when I get back? <laughs> or the next option, and let me just refer to my notes. Um, you you just you just spend as much time as you can with them. You spend as much as you time. Like you seem like a normal person, just spend time with them. Now, overall, I, I think these 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 few notes they can make you um, a great third wheeler. You just need to. The main thing is that you spend as much time with them as possible. I would say maybe 25 out of 24 hours of the day. Uh, basically, that extra hour or extra couple of hours when they're asleep, you don't sleep. You just watch over them like a like a guard like a guard dog. Like, right, like a guard dog, but and don't and if you don't feel like this lifestyle is for you, then maybe you should venture into something else. But if it is for you, then you'll be okay with it because basically, you're that you need to make that couple your world. You need to make them everything. You need to hold them high above everybody else in the world. Um, because who else have you got, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, it's funny because you got no one else so you make this couple your yeah. It actually sounds like a very bad idea to become an official third wheel. It feels like a lot of stress and a lot of hours you put yourself in. I, I don't know. I don't actually know if I'm ready for that. And that that brings me to to my final option, which is actually being and staying officially alone forever, like closing up shop everywhere. So you, you put a chastity belt on, you, you cover your nipples all the time to make sure you don't get aroused at all. Um, you close your heart off to any any kind of love or happiness. Um, and and um, yeah, you just become, you basically become an asexual. You don't find anything attractive. You, you just stay in that line. And uh, you could you can with this you can you can actually catch up of on um on TV shows that you've missed. You can shut yourself away and catch up on these TV shows that you've missed. So like for me, Game of Thrones, I need to catch up on that. So so I could spend a lot of time catching up on Game of Thrones. You could also catch up on some reading and become very smart. It's not like you have anyone to share the, the your knowledge with, but um but you have time to read as well. I'm not reading Game of Thrones because the books are way too big and long and I'm dyslexic, so it kind of scares me the amount of words that might be in that book. And um, yeah, you can take the time for yourself. And slowly, um, for me, one by one, my, my housemates would, uh, if while, while I'm doing all this stuff, gaining this knowledge from TV and, and books, uh, my housemates would get be in relationships so their partners would come around and it would be fun we would have banter all the time and and kind of bump into each other in the in the bathrooms and be like oh god <laughs> look at us me by myself and you with my best friend all my other friends it's taking up my time it's, it's good it's great 
and then and then one day it will kind of pent up it will get build up more and more and more and more uh, these these um, occasions will happen more and more often and 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 you will you will bump into each other and it'll be very annoying and then you'll try and cook in the living room in the kitchen not in the living room you never cook in the living room you cook in the kitchen and they're there and and it becomes too much that so they decide to move out so you so you, but you have nowhere else to go so you stay there you stay there Stay there by yourself, and and, and and then those friendships they they start to get married and have babies, and you go to the ceremonies by yourself, and 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 you kind of sit there, and you're like, oh god, they're building a real good life, and oh look, there's a baby up there, that's that's meant to be cute or something, isn't it? Oh, that's good, isn't it? And you go home alone, and you kind of think, oh, what am I gonna do with all this time alone? And you get your first pet dog. It's great because they love you. They're a puppy and they're just so excited to be around you. Slowly over the years, they they kind of they kind of grow up and become real dogs. So like they're still excited, but you kind of miss that first puppy instinct. So you get another one, and another one, another one. A couple more dogs. If I was smart enough, I'd do the maths and it'll bring me to fifteen. And and you get fifteen dogs. And then you, again, during this culture, you'll still be doing a lot of cultural things. So, like, you'll be so up to date on every series of Walking Dead, um, The Real Housewives of Atlanta, um, Superman, because that's the other series. Daredevil, um, it'll be on this 19th series by then. Um, Grey's Anatomy, you'll, become, you'll be able to become a full doctor by then. And, 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 then you'll start to go back to to older shows, so like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, right? Sit in a chair. You'll get meals for one. But you know what, guys? I don't worry about any of that because that's far away in the future. So we don't need to focus on any of that now. And that's how I conclude my talks about relationships. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. That's my madness about relationships. That actually went on for a lot longer than I thought. So it turns out this podcast is going to be a little bit longer than usual. Whoop, whoop for you. So now I'm going into my next topic, my next segment in my podcastness, which is called <laughs> News Yourself. Cue the music. So, in the News Yourself segment today, we only have one story. Now, it's mostly popped up on a lot of people's Facebooks a couple of weeks ago in the news section, or um, people have seen it because it's a very ridiculous but kind of funny story um, about a couple a couple from Newport, South Wales, who were banned from coming into London for engaging in sexual acts in the middle of Westfield Shopping Centre in London. Now, the culprits are Anika Ali uh, uh, was caught on shopping centre cameras with Fahad Billa uh, while their children were running around nearby. All sex! That's what they were having. Um, and I like the way in the article they described it as um, frolicking um, to, to describe said act that they were doing, but I just like to call it oral sex. They mentioned it earlier up in the article. I'll put, by the way, I'll put the article down there for you to have a full read of. Now, Ali said in court that I'm quite ashamed of what I did. I'm not happy what, with what happened at the time. I didn't realize I was going to do it. I was pregnant. We were, we were sitting together and it, it just happened. Uh, now my favorite quote from the whole article was her saying, I, I was pregnant and as a result of my hormones being everywhere, I just I just felt horny. And to that I say, you get, I get you girl, I get you, I get, you're my, you're my kind of girl, yeah, yeah, you're my kind of girl, I like that. Now, um, the judge finally concluded that, um, 
that they were not allowed to drive on the M5 to London for at least eight weeks other than for their final court day and then finish with the statements. You were in a public place where not only your children but others children's were around other children were around. You should be you should have known better. Now to this judge I would say Baby girl, you need to know when you can get it. If you can get it, you get it good. If you can't get it, then forget it. You know? You know. And that's my news story, guys. I'm great at news stories, aren't I? <laughs> the whole article, again, will be down in the description. And I just think it's a little bit of a funny story. And it's going on, again, the topic of relationships. So that's a happy couple who find the fun in whatever they're doing, wherever they can find it. And I think it's a life lesson to everyone. Find the fun in everything you do, even if it's having sex in Westfield Shopping Centre nearby kids. And that is the end of Hashtag News Yourself. <laughs> now, guys, I have actually saved a lot of time. I went through that story real quick. So normally at this section of the podcast, I do a random bits bit. So again, cue the, the intro sound or clip that i'm using this time and go future Aaron. are these ghosts are these ghosts and i still can't find a boo now on this edition of random shit i've um downloaded an app it's a um a would you rather kind of app it's called what's if because my windows phone only has that so it poses me questions and um and obviously gives me an answer uh, it gives me, it gives me a what if. So like, what if this, 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 but this, 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 this. So I'm going to go through some of them and then kind of talk through my answers and then we'll wrap this shit up, you know? Everyone can go home and have a nap, you know? So we start with this question. So what if you were always in good shape? That would be good one day. But you had to exercise a few times a week. That would be... Amazing. Isn't that how it works out? Now, that's a stupid first question. Well, let me read it again. What if you were always in good shape, but you had to exercise a few times a week? That's how it works, right? You build up stress. We'll go. Do you know what? I'm going to we're gonna skip that question real quick because that, that's a stupid first question. No. Okay. This seems like a more, more would you rather kind of one. Okay. What if... You got one million, I'm going to say, one million dollars per month for 25 years. But for the next five years, you may never take off your clothes, not even to examine your need, ex ex examine your needs, examine your needs, apparently. So I wasn't allowed to, so I get that amount of money. I'll keep my, my money, 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 my money. I'm sorry. Five years in the same, like, okay, I, I I like my clothes and I like my fashion, but, like, I would pick a hell of a good outfit that will just last me the good the next five years. Something loosey-goosey, you know, like maybe a shirt that I look smart during, like, weddings. So say if I did get married, which would be a miracle, if I got married, I would have a shirt on already. So I feel like, yes, yes, I would do that. Yeah. Okay, on to the next question. Okay, we're on to the next question. Just because this is also, it's got little ads in it as well saying, would you subscribe? What if we said you could have five points if you subscribe, you sent this to a friend, but it would take you to the next question and blah, blah, blah. Fuck off, mate. Let me just play the game, yeah? Okay, so next question. What if you could lie together any... Ooh, you could lie together anything for anyone and they... You could lie together. That, oh my gosh, that actually doesn't make any sense. That's not even my dyslexia playing up. That doesn't make any sense. What if you could lie together anything for anyone and they would believe you? So what it's basically saying is, what if you could lie to anyone um, and they would believe you, but you have to become a politi political activist? Now, 
I feel like that's 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 fine. I would try to be that anyway if I was a political activist. Try to be honest with everyone. I know obviously sometimes you have to kind of bend the truth a little bit, but I feel like it would be good. It would be refreshing to have like someone who literally couldn't lie. You know, that's a hint at politics. So I say yes to that one. Okay, next question. What if you had a bag of chips that never got empty? Dream. But you will never be loved. Guys, this is... Oh my gosh, this is actually my biggest fear. If I ever had to choose between being loved and food. I mean, how can one actually, how do you get over that? Like, choosing between food and love. I mean, love is great and all, and it can develop and, and bring you so much joy in your life and, and, and just make you whole, you know, you're having someone there to talk to and stuff like that. But Food, things like macaroni cheese, what about bacon, what about chocolate, what about a nice quinoa salad, kale, kale is actually pretty damn good guys if you massage it really well, what about a good, good ham and cheese sandwich, what about steak, what about steak guys? I don't think I can go on. I can't play this game. I think I think I'm done. That's that question's blown me. That's blown me out of the water. I I have to leave. I can't. No, I can't. You you're trying to make me choose between food and love. I can't choose between food and food and you want me to choose food and love. You want me to choose between food and... I'd rather die. I think I'd rather die. Between food, food and lo... I think I'd rather... Why, mate? No. Die. I picked none of them. That's the end. <gasps> Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> so, I've gone back to... I think I've gone back to my crazy roots. So... Look forward to that, the next podcast. So, guys, as always, please listen to the whole thing, which would be great if you're listening to this. You've obviously listened to the whole thing, and well done to you. Well done to you. So keep um, subscribing and sharing and, and letting people know about my podcast. Um, it's really fun to do. It's really fun to write. It's taking me a little bit longer to write nowadays because I really want to make sure I hit every point that I want to hit. But I think I'm doing okay. I need to. I do want to churn out more more regularly. I used to do it weekly and now it's turned into apparently monthly. So hopefully I'm going to get back on the wagon of doing it weekly. Um and it would be just great that um, if you share it and like it and and just do all good things and send me messages of happiness because it's just nice to feel happy when, when I'm writing these and thinking, oh, does anyone actually want to hear this? It's nice to know if people are listening. Um, so we normally close up the episode on a quote. I have a good quote wall here um, and I think I'm just going to pick... This one. So, be the change you want to see. And that was said by Gandhi. That's a good message to leave on. Thank you very much, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.